and welcome to this special edition of Decision 2016 Digest. It's September 24, 2015, and I'm your host, Scott Jones. Thanks for joining us. You know, I like to do these special editions whenever an issue comes up that I think you need to know about or extremely pisses me off. We've got a twofer in this one because not only do I think you need to know about this, it has extremely pissed me off and it's been my birthday week. But in any event, the mainstream media is attacking GOP candidates this week uh, with what I call the Muslim mainstream media lie. And that is asking all the GOP questions uh, such as, um, do you think Obama's a Muslim and planting people in their town hall audi audiences? And the latest round was with Dr. Ben Carson uh, asking him would he support a Muslim for president. And it's gotten all tangled up. Dr. Carson shouldn't have fallen for the bait in that question. But the talk all week long has been this mainstream media dishonest meme about GOPs hating Muslims and so on and so forth. So I thought it was important to talk about. I'm totally pissed off at the mainstream media. I have zero against peace-loving Muslims. I, I love and care about them just like I do everyday Americans. Anyone who wants to be part of the fabric of our society and in a peaceful way, in a constructive way, is welcome to me. My issue is not with the Muslim faith on this. It's with the dishonesty and double talk of the mainstream media. Now, I've had a visceral response to this, but my partner and mentor and the home station uh, of my radio show, Pissed Off Politically Speaking, the 405 Media in Los Angeles, I've invited the 405 Radio's uh, president and uh, uh, program manager uh, to join me for this discussion. He wrote a great piece this week that is a little bit more cerebral than my visceral response I'm giving you here. So what I thought we'd do is we'll go back and forth with my visceral response and his more insightful, uh, thoughtful response and talk about it and hopefully give you some information uh, that you can take away and decide on your own. So give me just a moment and we're going to connect uh, John Grant from the 405 Radio in Los Angeles. I'll be right back. Told you it'd only be two shakes. Joining me now from Los Angeles is a friend, a mentor, and a partner in my radio career at the 405 Radio in Los Angeles. Uh, they host my show, Pissed Off Politically Speaking. My friend, my colleague, John Grant, joining us from L.A. How you doing, John? Hello, Scott. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm glad for you to be here. I told the folks before uh, we uh, took a pause to hook you up, uh, I've had a real visceral response at this whole media meme and the dishonesty in it and how they're baiting and capturing people like Ben Carson and Donald Trump and these questions of is Obama a Muslim or would, uh, would you support a Muslim as president? Now, the dishonesty in it to me, John, is I'm not aware of any Muslim that's running for president right now and I'm not sure there's any Muslim who is thinking about running uh, for president right now. But our people are getting asked about that, and then you have the guy come out from CARE in his thick Middle Eastern accent, which, by the way, CARE has been cited by certain government agencies as having ties to Hamas and Hezbollah, saying that a person, a great American like Ben Carson, should drop out of the presidential race. I think that's pretty ballsy, and I've had a real visceral response. You wrote a piece, a more cerebral calm piece, and a real reason piece that I felt like talked about uh, the Muslim faith and the whole current Muslim shaming thing that's going on right now. Why don't you share with our folks your thoughts? And I thought there were some great pieces in there. Well, the technique has been to try and separate Ben Carson from his initial statements. And he has not taken the bait on that. He's doubled down on that. And he has said that he could not vote for a Muslim as president of the United States. And he cited Sharia. Now, as we know, Sharia transcends political, personal, and cultural uh, guidelines for behavior for Muslims. Everywhere it's practiced in the world, it's very much a, a political and a religious and, and a personal following. Uh, he doesn't believe it's compatible with the U.S. Constitution. I agree with him 100 percent, and I back him in terms of not backing down from that. Well, John, what is it about the liberal progressives and by extension their sycophants and the mainstream media who are twisting themselves into pretzels 
to foment and accommodate and push the whole Muslim meme on the American people. My cynical self says, in 2012 we have the war on women. It looks like 2016, because they don't have a decent candidate for president, it's going to be GOP people or a bunch of bigots and it's going to be a war on Muslims in America. It seems just so dishonest to me, John. Well, I hate to say it, but shortly after 9-11, President Bush did somewhat get the ball rolling on this when he's at war with Islam. Uh, Islam is the underpinning for all the hatred toward the West, all the violence that's been fomented. Um, I'm, I'm struggling to separate the two at this point. And I understand where I think President Bush was coming from, uh, but it, it really, I think if he had known then what we know now, um, the, the two really can't be separated in terms of the conduct and in terms of the faith. I know there are some moderate uh, Muslims in the United States, but again, you know, when you get into the Sharia zone, then you're talking about some things which are completely contrary to Western culture, and I think uh, inducements to attack the West. So, if, if I understand what you just said, basically, Ben Carson gave an honest answer, just maybe not a well-crafted one, or maybe not a well-explained one, but it was an honest answer. And honestly, my reading, and I've been by no, no means a Muslim scholar, I thought the point you brought out in your article, which by the way, guys, right at the bottom of the screen is the 405media.com, you can go there and read it, uh, is that it does permeate everything they do, whether it's their culture, their faith, and government. And my response, when I see people like Chuck Todd, John, throw that question to Ben Carson, who has saved countless lives and has no skeletons in his closet and is just a good American person who's put himself out there uh, to be a presidential candidate. You know, when I see that, my visceral response is, all right, Chuck Todd, you drag your wife, your kids, go live in a Muslim country where they have Muslim leadership that permeates their government, live there a year, and then come back and lecture us and report on how it went. There are Muslim leaders in the United States who have said, uh, we're not about making Sharia compatible with the U.S. Constitution. We believe Sharia is superior to the U.S. Constitution. Why people like a blind eye to that, I can't explain. But he needs to have people like that on his show. They're, they've told you what their intentions are. Why don't we believe them? It's what they want. It's, it's where they see this headed in the United States. And I'm sorry, but 200,000 Syrian refugees probably gets them closer to that and not farther from it. Well, we're running out of time, but there was your comment there reminded me of another passage in the piece that you wrote that I thought was very interesting. And that is the whole notion of assimilation that hundreds of thousands of people have are ending up in Austria and Hungary and Germany and I mean those are the, those numbers are the size of mid-sized US cities and the impact that that's going to have on their on their culture do you think that people really don't understand what the real social impact of doing that is going to be well as far as Europe is concerned um I think they're looking at uh, a population decline, uh, which they have no solution to other than immigrants at this point. Uh, in the United States, you know, again, as I said, uh, Sharia by definition cannot assimilate with the American culture and the U.S. Constitution. I think people need to wake up and, and realize that. It's uncomfortable, and even for people on the right, because I think it sort of goes down the, the Bertha Road. Um, there's some question as to you know what Obama's faith is. A lot of Democrats aren't sure what Obama's faith is, and it just sort of opens up a lot of ugly old sores, some of which were started by the Hillary Clinton campaign in 2008. As we tape this, uh, she's doing a number of interviews with people where she denies up and down that you know her campaign was the source of the Bertha rumors back then. Well, and the fact is, a number of her staffers in Iowa got fired because they were found to be the ones who actually started that meme. Well, John, what I wanted to do is, is again, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm hoping just to get the information out to people that they can make up their, their own minds. Uh, it just aggravates the hell out of me that with the economy the way it is, our position on the world stage, the people that are out of work looking for jobs, all of these things that are important 
that the mainstream media, I don't know if it's George Soros's brand group that spits this stuff out to the mainstream media, but the notion that the number one question you want to ask a presidential candidate on the GOP side is would they vote for a Muslim for president as being a priority for the American people. And the dishonesty and hypocrisy of it all, John, is just what kills me. Final word. Exactly. The reason they want you to walk it back is because they know it's a winning issue. They know it's something that the majority of Americans are concerned about. Immigration, amnesty is another one. So again, they're, they're trying to separate the candidate from the issue because they understand that it wins. Well, John, thank you so much for being with us. You've been a great friend. You've been a great mentor. I love being on the 405 radio. Folks, I've got links to the 405media.com down in the descriptions. I hope you'll look up John's work and read his piece on this very topic. It's our job to bring you the information and you decide. John Grant, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Scott. Well, my sincere thanks to my friend and colleague, John Grant, President and Program Director at the 405 Radio in Los Angeles. I appreciate him joining me, and I hope you will look at his piece that he wrote on uh, the Muslim faith and how it intersects with culture and politics in the Muslim world. Uh, thanks for indulging me on my visceral response. I'm sorry. Right is right and wrong is wrong. And what the mainstream media is doing uh, with the GOP candidates, especially Trump and Dr. Ben Carson, is just wrong. It's dishonest and it's misleading and it's a disservice to the viewing public. So my idea was to present you the info with two points of view. You can take it in and make up your own mind. Look down in the description. I've got a direct link again to the 405media.com. Also a direct link to my radio show site, popsradioshow.com. Also a special deal for my viewers, I always like to try and give you the hookup. If you like to listen to the books instead of read them, special deal with audible.com. The link's down there. Uh, use that link and you will get a one month free trial, no obligation, and your first book download is free from audible.com. That link is down there too. We'll be here this Sunday with our regular edition. It's been a Popealicious week. We'll have all of the impact of the Pope's, Pope's visit uh, to the U.S. But uh, until that time, uh, give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing. It lets me know you appreciate the effort we're putting out. Until next time, we'll be talking to you.